Hello everyone, welcome to another run here in American Truck Simulator. Today I've got the Kenworth T660 from Truck.com and he has updated it for 1.5. I've got a date cab version here and I've got it, well, as close as I can pop, probably get it off the top of my head to safety clean yellow. This is the enemy to me. Uh, eight years in the used oil industry and these guys were a competitor to my company and we loved taking accounts away from them. But I'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Tractor Common updated this and this is the day cab version as I mentioned. There are five total cab versions here. Uh, unfortunately there is no headache wreck for the day cab version. So if you like doing day cabs here and you want to haul a flatbed and you want to keep it legit, you're going to have to find a trailer that has a headache rack on the trailer like the uh, uh, Smarties Fontaine pack. Uh, other than that, you are not going to get one here. There is one for the uh, sleeper, but not for the day cab. So one little minor oversight. Other than that, the, the truck looks good. Not a lot of options here, but if you, you know, that's fine. That, that's There's no big deal with that one. If you are a fan of the 386 like myself, this is about as close as you're going to get to it right now. Uh, I mean, yeah, the 386 is still out there. You can still drive it, but as far as customization and things like that, this is going to be your best bet because this is the sister truck to the 386. So time for me to shut up, get out of the parking lot here. Just crawl my way over that mountain of a freaking speed bump they have here. Now the trailer here is on the Steam Workshop, so check the description there for a link. Uh, or otherwise, just go to the Steam Workshop yourself and take a look. It was recently uploaded, so it should still be right at the top, depending on how you sort everything. For me, I sort it all out by most recent. Now, I gotta be honest, this is not exactly the right tanker to be using for this. Hauling today here, used oil, 57,000 pounds of it, going to the Chevron refinery up there in San Rafael. Now, as I said though, I mean, this is not the correct trailer. I'm not gonna nitpick, but I'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that yeah, this is not exactly the correct trailer for it. This is more of a propane trailer. Um, the better trailer, yeah, you could go ahead and use the fuel trailer. Uh, those have been used, and a lot of them still are used. Um, also, you could use the milk trailer from Sybaris. Unfortunately, the only cargo for that one is milk. Uh, you could also use his other trailer pack, which is usually for uh, non-portable water, propylene glycol, things like that, but used oil can also be put in trailers like that. The company I worked for usually used uh, uh, fuel tankers, basically. Uh, for the most part, that's what they looked like. So that is usually the trailer you're going to see. Something like this, yeah, it's going to be mainly for pro propane and items like that. But, uh, and I don't even think, to be quite honest, Safety Clean uses Kenworths. 
and I'm trying to remember some of their trucks. Usually it was internationals for their strict trucks, and that's usually the ones I see. I haven't, I never really pay attention to them anymore the last couple of years since I'm out of that industry. It's, you know, that's something I really worry about. But uh, Safety Clean is also no longer a uh, company on their own. They were bought out by another uh, rival, uh, Clean Harbors. So that happened about three years ago or so, and I and I had heard that people at Safety Clean were worried about their jobs. Oh, I am doing 61, huh? Okay. There we go. Shut up. Um, so I, I don't know how well that's going now for them. I did actually think about applying, uh, since I live near Champaign now, I did think about applying there to uh, get back into the industry, but uh, decided not to. Um... Who knows, maybe in the future I will, but uh, I know they do things a little different than how my company did that I used to work for, so I guess I can get rid of that screen. There we go. Now, the company I worked for, I was still based out of the headquarters in the south suburbs of Chicago, and the owner was still there almost every day, and uh, he started up in... 95 I think with him and his brother and just two trucks and they expanded from there so safety clean has been around a little longer I think they're a UK based company that's what I was told anyway I've been told a lot of stories about safety clean but uh, I know some of their practices and uh, <laughs> I had a few customers that were not happy with safety clean and refused to use them no matter what um, you know, whether it was because attitude of the office people, attitude of the drivers, uh, prices. They like to lure companies in with great prices because, and I don't know if this is still the case, oil prices being as low as they are, when they were 80 90 or $120 a barrel, used oil companies were paying places like the oil chain shops and like Walmart, like I just left here, for their oil. They bought the oil off of them, the used oil. So when you went and go got your oil changed, someone was coming along, like my company or Safety Clean here, and they were buying whatever oil they had off of them. And then they turn around, they'll refine it. Most of the time it goes for heating oil, uh, well, not so much heating oil. It can be used for heating oil. It, uh, a lot of dealerships and shops will have oil burners inside their garage and they heat them up. More so old school shops in the cities and countries. Uh, out in the country, they burn a lot of their oil out there. But um, it for us, when I was at Future, one of the biggest customers we had was an aluminum plant in northwest Indiana. So we would be trucking over a crap load of gallons over there to fire their blast furnace and everything. So they, uh, you know, there's multiple uses for used oil. Um, it's actually starting, I believe it's still in the testing phase. I haven't looked into it for a while, but uh, it can actually be refined slightly and used as fuel oil for cargo ships uh, since they basically use almost a raw crude. It's really, I mean, it, diesel is usually cheaper because it doesn't take as much to refine as gasoline does. Uh, a, a fuel oil for big ships that's the least amount of refining uh, on fuel than anything else really so it, it, it was getting slightly re redefined or refined and then used into a fuel oil for the cargo ships so that was starting to become a thing um, safety clean and other companies are using used oil and uh, reconditioning it and turning it into new oil. Uh, there was a couple of Jiffy Loops I went to that had the safety clean oil. It, it was basically safety clean oil. It was you know, re reprocessed used oil into new oil. Um, you know, so there's lots of different uses for it and it's, and I, I don't know if they're still paying for oil. I mean, oil is sitting in the $50 50 to $55 a, a, a barrel range. Uh, used oil is used loosely based off of that so uh, it could they when it got down to like in the 30s they were charging they went back to charging places to remove the oil 
Um, that might have changed now. I don't know. I actually haven't talked to some of my old oil drivers yet, but uh, that, if it is, then yeah, if you're getting charged a disposal fee when you change your oil, they're probably still getting charged. Um, but there is a possibility that there is a no charge for oil, or maybe it's a 10 cents per gallon pickup, whichever one. But when if you notice the oil prices and gas prices go up, it's pretty safe to assume that eventually uh, places are, are going to be getting paid for their oil. In which case, and I've gotten into an argument with a couple of places when I went and got my oil changed years ago, they wanted to charge me a disposal fee. And I asked them, I said, what's this about? Oh, well, we have to pay to have the oil taken away. And I started laughing, and he said, what's so funny? I said, you're the manager, right? And he goes, yeah. And I said, you know damn well that doesn't fly. And I had my I had my, my uniform on and everything. And I said, you've seen my company before, right? And he goes, yeah, your driver was just in here last week. And I said, so you know damn well I know you're not paying to have your oil taken away. And he just stood there silent because he knew I had him. And I said, how much are you getting paid right now? And this is probably early on before oil took off. And so it was probably like 30 cents a gallon, something like that. He was probably getting paid. And uh, he's like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't I don't handle any of that. And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> the, whole, the driver comes and hands you the damn check. Don't tell me you don't do with any of that shit. You see how much that check is. So... And then he turned around and tried to say, oh, well, it's an EPA fee. You know, an EPA charges us. I was like, get the fuck out of here. And he ended up waving it because he wanted to charge me like four bucks for it. And I was like, get bent, dude. You know, you're not, you're not scamming a little. And then I, I understand why they still do it, though. Even though, yeah, there's no EPA fee. And, okay, yeah, right now they, they might be getting charged. It could be a no charge. Maybe they're getting paid. I don't know. It depends on the market and where, it's, you know, the company. But, uh, you know, there is no EPA fee. There is no EPA storage fee. There is nothing that has to do with any of that. And it's just, it, the thing is, when you go to get your oil changed, honestly, really, what you should be paying to have your oil changed, unless you've got something that takes, you know, a semi, you know, a semi truck worth of oil, you know, if you got. Like a pickup was probably going to be six, seven quarts or something like that. A car is going to be, what, four or five or six. You know, it's gone up over the years. But, um, you know, you go in there and you're probably going to pay, what, $20, 30 $35, depending on where you go. And really what they should be charging you because of the overhead that they have with employees and you know, material and things like that is probably closer to like $60, $70. Now, they know no one in their right mind is going to sit there and change their oil for, you know, $75 when it's just regular conventional. So, when when they get you in there with nineteen ninety five oil changes or, you know, twenty four ninety five or whatever, twenty nine ninety five, whatever it is, they are losing money on those oil changes. And so, a location that does that does just oil changes, and still charges you like maybe thirty bucks again or thirty dollars for an oil change, if they have a full staff of people, and we're talking, oh, five people, you know, six people, whatever, if they have a full crew sitting there doing all that work, they're losing money. There's no way. There's no way around it. They are losing money. So what gets these oil places and I've had a couple of Valvolines over in Iowa that ended up getting uh, shut down because of this that was on a shot I've had some Valvolines out in Iowa get shut down because they weren't selling enough other items. What they make their money on is selling you your air filters, your cabin filters, your wiper blades. Uh, they sell it, they get money on trans, uh, trans oil changes, radiator flushes, all those extra things they try to sell you on every time you're in there. That's where they make their money. So if they're not selling you on that stuff, they're losing money, and eventually they will end up having to lay people off or shut down, like what happened to some of the Valvolines I used to service. 
So, you know, you guys, if you guys go into a place and they're hassling you, you know, hey, you should do this, hey, you should do that, that's why they're doing it. They're not doing it to... Yeah, they're doing it to make extra money, but because they have to. They're losing money on your oil change. Plain and simple. So, but, you know, it, be careful if you go in some place and try to hassle them. You see there's a the, the disposal fee, and you, you want to, if you sit there and try to argue with them, be careful on that. Because, as it is right now, I mean, oil, like I said, is in the mid-50s or so, give or take. I haven't listened for about a week, so I don't know, but... As I record this, oil, it was last time I heard, last week was $53 a barrel. So, there's a good chance that, yeah, that company, Safety Clean, uh, I don't think it'd be IRS, that's Illinois Recovery, uh, Solvent, no, not Solvent Systems, Crystal Clean is another one, um, Future Environmental, my old company is another one, they're primarily in the Midwest, depending where you're at, it's going to be different companies, but there's a good possibility that yes they are probably paying someone to take away their oil i could be wrong it could be no charge who knows like i said it's all different but watch out for the nickel and diming stuff you know that's where they're going to get you in you know it, they don't like it when people talk about this stuff it's like giving away company you know trade secrets or something but you know it, it, it's fair information you know you you people as consumers should know what you're paying for and why. So, in a case like this, if you're seeing that, move over, cop. That's right, you stopped. Thank you. Um, if you're seeing, you know, four, five, six dollar charges, eh, you might want to question that. And if they want to say it's an EPA fee, you tell them to stop lying to you. And you might want to think about going somewhere else. My experience so far, though, I, I take my, my charger to a... Because uh, I have a 2012 Dodge Charger, and I take it to a dealership near me. Small country dealership. And the guy... Yeah, I already introduced myself, and I was even wearing my jacket, and he goes, hey, I saw one of you guys, and I was, oh, yeah, I used to work there, and blah, 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 and we stroke up a rapport, and now I only get charged, like, 2650 the change for uh, synthetic on my charger. That's a pretty good price for synthetic on a, what is that, 3.6 liter. Yes, unfortunately, I have just a six-cylinder in my charger. Don't hate me too much. I went with the eight-speed so I get 32 miles at a gallon right now, and it goes up a little bit more in the summertime. So, yeah, I'd rather have the Hemi in there, but wasn't an option. They wouldn't work with me on the RT that was sitting in the showroom. My car cost four or five thousand dollars less than the RT that was sitting in the showroom that was a year older. But they wouldn't work with me on the RT. They would only work with me on this one because they wanted to get rid of it because it was the last one of that model year. But, uh, no, I enjoy it. This, the, the engine in my Charger, really, really peppy. 300 horsepower. And uh, it's also a motor that they use in Europe. Fiat has uh, put it in other cars. I had someone telling me that Maserati... Uh, uses it as well. I didn't find any proof of that, but, uh, you know, as wound up tight as this motor is, and it's a very good motor, very good, uh, I, re I honestly really wouldn't be surprised. And I found out recently that it's a motor that I can turbocharge as well if I wanted to, because that was actually an option that uh, Chrysler was looking at for some models. So, the engine is ready for turbocharging if I were to ever want to do that. I don't think there's any turbocharging packages out there, but my one main thing that I shed a tear on is I cannot put an exhaust on it. I really wish I could, but then again, I needed a V8 for that. On my uh, 2002 Dodge Dakota quad cab that I had, 4.7 liter V8, Headers and a Flowmaster 40 series. Oh, that sounded good. It sounded awesome. But here we are, Chevron. Time to recycle this oil. Oh 
am I going? Right here. Okay. This will be interesting. A trailer like this, you can't move those rear tandems. So you gotta swing wide on a lot of these because that trailer is just gonna really lag behind you. Alright, there we go. I'll tell you what, that is a nice looking combination, if I don't say so myself. That looks nice. But, that's it for now guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and check out Tractor Commons T660 if you haven't already. Check the description on that one. Check the description on the Safety Clean Trailer 2 if you want to have a little bit of variety. Like I said, it's the wrong trailer, but you know what? It works. And from what I've seen, this is the only size trailer. There are two size propane trailers in the game, but this is the only size trailer that is with this mod pack, with the trailer pack here. So, um, not quite sure what his plans are, if he's going to bring it to the smaller one or not, but either way, you know what? It looks good. It works. So, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.